Alright, before I start this video, I actually totally forgot. Big spoiler alerts. Mate, it be like spoilers. Uh, basically spoilers about all things, all things Fontaine up until uh, essentially Act 3. Uh, I'm sorry, Act 5 of Chapter 4. Basically all of like, all of Chapter 4's Archon Quest. So, you know, Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4. So, big spoilers. I recommend you either play it or watch it or read it on your own. If you don't care about spoilers, then you're a maniac. But if you do, don't watch this video. It contains major spoilers. I just want to talk about what's going on. So, yeah, you've been warned. Alright, well, hello there. Welcome back to another Genshin video. And honestly, we're not going to be doing any, like, story-related things right now. But I do want to talk about the holy crap the Archon quest that just happened and honestly my thoughts of all of the Fontaine uh, the Fontaine Archon quest art in general too because I mean there was so much that happened at that last video I think it's gonna be part six actually at the time of recording I can do anything I want while I record this audio so I can freaking just upload a YouTube video right now boom upload that all right upload I think that's episode five of part uh of act five of chapter four i just uploaded part five i'm currently uploading part five <clears throat> but yeah holy crap that ending was a while and there's so much things to talk about and i didn't really get a chance to talk about too much stuff at the end of the last video just because it was so long and so i want to do that right now because i think what happened was pretty interesting like a lot of interesting stuff happened and i think um it's worth talking about and also, I just love talking about the lore and, you know, getting my thoughts out there because I think it's, you know, it's interesting stuff. But yeah, the whole thing about, I think what really shocked me was that there was a difference between, or like, this will get, this video is going to be rambly. So get ready for like, no coherent thoughts because I'm just going to be going on from one topic to another and I'm probably going to forget some things and it might not be the clearest of videos. And I don't really have anything planned, so I'm just going to, this is all freestyle, so... What that means is it's gonna end up really bad. But anyways, it's, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I was really surprised that the Hydro Archon Farina wasn't the Hydro Archon. We've been baited. We've actually been baited. Um, you know, Venti was kind of like, oh, he's not the Archon. Oh, he is the Archon. Thing with Zhongli, Zhongli was like, oh, he's not the Archon. Oh, but he is the Archon. Raiden Shogun, funny enough, was kind of the same thing too. Raiden Shogun was like, oh, you know, that's the Archon. Wait, no, she isn't the Archon. It's actually A was the Archon. And, you know, Raiden Shogun is just a puppet. And so it was kind of the reverse of, like, um, we, we thought that this person was the Archon, but Raiden Shogun is not the Archon. It's, it's A. And honestly, it's not even supposed to be A. It's supposed to be Turing's sister, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then Nahida, I mean, yeah, she's, she's Archon. <laughs> but in this one, we, every, we thought it was Freena, but that was the whole thing. It was the whole thing that Fossilors, the true Hydro Archon, Kind of made this whole thing that she made up um and i think how i interpreted the entire uh, prophecy and the whole thing about fossilors is that i think fossilors knew that the prophecy was going to happen and she, she tried to hatch up a plan on like how she was going to solve this prophecy issue and the plan that she came up with and it obviously worked was that she is going to make a human name that person uh farina and that person is going to act as the archon and then she, heard, and then Fossilor in the background is gonna chill at the opera house, you know, be, being the the Oratrix, you know. And then that Oratrix, because like I think people said that the Oratrix was made by the Archon, which is true, but it wasn't made by Farina. It was made by the Archon Fossilor, right? And then the entire time when there was trials happening, we saw that you know, I mean, this is what Fossilor said that she was grand, getting that in the Ninium. So that she can eventually have enough a strength, have enough power in that Indonesian to like kill herself, and, and and then that's the whole purpose. Like the reason why that the prophecy can be fulfilled, um, or the reason why the prophecy is happening is because there's this sin. You know, there's this sin, and this sin can only be cured when all of the fontaine, all the water has gone up, and only the uh, Hydro Archon on her throne alone is left and then that's when all the sins are washed away and you know the original sin was the creation uh, or the, the previous Hydro Archon which I don't remember their name but the previous one before Fossilors made a sin and that sin was like going against heavenly principles because that sin was creating humans from oceanids 
And that was bad because we, uh, we were not, not supposed to do that. That was like, like creating humans like only ocean and or only the heavenly principles are supposed to do. Um, but, but my point is that that sin was something that false lords want to get rid of. And she got rid of it uh, by, by one, killing herself because that would kind of like go uh for the, the the what the oral truth was saying right the the the, the hydro archon needed a death sentence and if she killed herself right. i think that would I, i'm chance. pretty sure like if she kills herself then it removed the sin because it is the the archon that has sinned right the previous but the archon before full sword was the one that sinned and so if the and then the sin got um passed on to full Solars. And so Force Lord was like, okay, if I, if, if I die, then exactly sin is gone. Is but also, I think Nivellet at the end there kind of said that, yeah, he also kind of fixed the sin problem. Because after after Force Lord died, there's another thing that could happen, is that Force Lord could give the dragon, the, the full power of the dragon sovereign back to Nivellet. Because Nivellet didn't mention that he was the dragon sovereign, but he doesn't have full power. I, I don't exactly remember that conversation. Again, I think it was at the end of the second. I want to say it was at the end of the second. No, it might have been at the end of Act 4 of Chapter 4. Act 4 of Chapter 4, I think that's when when he, he revealed that he was the hydro, the water sovereign, all that stuff too, right? But he didn't have power. And so with full slurs killing herself, not only I think right. that she removed the that's sin, because again, she's, sin, she's a sinned person. Um, being able to give power back to Nivellet would have been uh, helped Nivellet create everybody to be, you know, full human. All the Fontaines to be full humans. Um, there's another thing I want to mention about the parallel between Fossilors and Rucka the Vata, but but I still want to keep on talking about the conversation about the sin because there's also the conversation about justice, right? The whole justice conversation that was being had. Um, you know, those Fossilors talking about like, okay, so like justice. You know, unjustice, I guess justice, and then sin was kind of the opposite word. And then she was like, well, I kind of sin, but she felt that it was kind of justice in creating people, giving humans, or giving the ocean it's like a human life. I think she kind of felt like that was kind of justice on her part. And at the end, she said that she was doing like a real justice. Again, I would have to relook at that part, but she said she was doing a real justice, um, being able to... Uh, uh, make those people human and all that stuff and I think it was it was right. Nivellet truly off. finishing what I mean Nivellet said it at the end there he was truly finishing what the two Hydro Archons uh, had in store which was trying to you know remove all this sin that they may have created but trying to create a race of humans um, out of the oceanids right so I think that was the whole conversation about justice again there's a whole nation of justice so there's a lot of justice talk you know there's a lot of things you can talk about justice but then again, that kind of gets muddy because like you have to kind of define what justice means. And again, these are kind of the terms of justice that it's justice to force or it's justice to never let. But that might not be justice to the heavenly principles, right? But also, I did want to talk about the parallels to Great Lord Rocket Devata because there's a lot of Archon lore that we just got dropped on us. And I feel like it's kind of similar to Lord Rocket Devata where... Uh, Greater Lord Rucka Devata felt that she needed to remove herself from, you know, the Tree of Wisdom. She needed to remove herself from the entire world to vet. All right, she needed her to be completely forgotten, because if she is not completely forgotten, there would always be like problems. You know, the, like the toxins, the poison at the tree, right? The Tree of Indomusbol or whatever it's called, right? Um. And the reason why there's always problem is because there's memories of her because she's like, accumulated all these toxins um, from living so long. And to, to avoid, you know, further problems in Sumeru, she had to remove herself. And I felt like this is very similar to what Forcelors had to do. To remove all the problems that was plaguing Fontaine, she had to remove herself. And, and, and that, the best way of doing that, I think she felt, was to kind of keep the prophecy going. And then at the end, right at the end when the prophecy was going to happen, kind of, you know, deceive the heavenly principles in trying to, you know, because the heavenly principles Let's was the one off. who kind of made the prophecy, kind of wanted all the Fontanians to go back into water, to ocean, to their uh, original form. Take but um, again, Fossil Lord set up this whole thing about, okay, this freeing a person, you know, I'm going to kill myself. 
I'm gonna do all this stuff to kind of like curve the heavenly principle. So it's pretty, it's pretty insane. And the whole thing about like heavenly principles and Celestia, um, I mean, that's a whole conversation of itself. I'm not too privy on information about heavenly principles and Celestia. I'm not sure if, cause Celestia was depicted as an island, but I'm not sure if it's an island, if it's like, if it's a, it's more of like a human being, a God, a entity, like it's very confusing what uh, Celestia is in, in Genshin Impact. It's very similar to, I think, the Wisdom. What's it called? Wisdom in, in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? You know the guy with no face who's all white? That that they come see from time to time? Or at least the main character saw a few times, right? So that's like one thing. It's very confusing. But at that point, yeah, I think that's enough talk about, about Full Solaris. But then the whole thing about Farina, I mean... My question that was plaguing my mind is, what do you guys think was worse? The 500 year of torture that Farina had to put up this masquerade, you know, this facade? Or do you think that's worse? Or do you think it's, uh, A, fighting the Raiden Shogun puppet for, like, hundreds of years? Because, like, for us, uh, this was during, um, spoiler alert, this was during uh, Raiden Shogun's second story quest when she was fighting against her puppet. A was fighting against the Raiden Shogun, essentially. And, uh, and then, like, Yai and us were trying to come in and save her. But, like, she was fighting for, like, a hundred... I'm so sad. I was talking... I was just going off. I was going off, but then I realized that my microphone was off. I'm taking off my shirt. I'm heating up. I'm so... And, um... Indeed, yeah, I, I, okay, well, well, hello there, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today, I want to be talking about my thoughts about, basically, the version 4 Archon Quest, especially the ending of it, but I do want to talk about all the other characters, but yeah, I, I was, I was spitting, I was spitting about, like, Fossilor's lore, and then I realized that my mic was muted, the end, uh, I'm not sure when it muted, but I'll have to repeat some things that I had to say. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, I kind of want to start off this conversation talking about, Basically, what happened and what happened? Oh, I'm gonna have to repeat some stuff. I don't know how much of it I had recorded or not. I'm so sad. Um, I guess I could drag that fire into like GarageBand to see like when I when I was muted to see if it was the entire time or what. Um, but anyways, I don't even know where I saved that file. By the way, is it on my desktop? It should be on my desktop. It is on my desktop. Okay, sweet. But yeah, I was talk I was spitting there, and unfortunately, I I was muted for some part of it, which is pretty tragic. But anyways, yeah, a lot happened at the end of the Archon Quest, and honestly, the first thing I want to talk about is Fossilors. Okay, I was muted. Oh, okay, I was muted. Not that much. I don't know when I was muted. I think maybe when I started talking about Farina. Okay, whatever. I'm not gonna talk about Fossilors. I'm gonna start talking about Farina. But yeah, I think at the end of that, I did mention something about Fosslords being um, part of the Opera Epicles. So she was there the entire time, basically just regurgitating everything that Nivellet was saying, right? Giving the same verdicts. But the only time she gave different verdicts, uh, Fosslords herself gave different verdicts, was the whole thing about Child. Again, uh, that was mentioned a lot in the Archon Quest, but it seems like the reason why she wanted Child to be guilty was that she knew that it could help with the Narwhal situation and also how it could help with, um, yeah, basically just help with the Narwhal situation and get the ball rolling. And then also at the very end was when she wanted uh, the death sentence for herself, kind of the catalyst that started the whole thing. But again, we were talking about uh, Farina. And yeah, I was talking about like, I don't know if I'm, if this was get, get, got, got caught in the last recording, but I was talking about the whole thing about Farina and uh, A, which, which, which one, which, which one do you think had it worse? Farina who suffered 500 years doing the same thing over and over again, never being able to confide in everybody right. being lonely That's the enough. entire time? Or do you think A had it worse when A, again, this spoilers for Rain and Shogun's uh, story quest, uh, chapter two, I believe. Uh, but who had it worse, uh, Farina or A, when she had to fight against Raiden Shogun? The Raiden Shogun puppet, when she had to fight against herself, essentially. For hundreds of years, for us, it was a little bit, because I think it was the Traveler and, like, Yai Miko just phasing back and forth. But, yeah, Raiden Shogun and A were in there and fighting for a long time. Which, which one do you think had it worse? That's an argument there. But, yeah, Farina kind of... Kind of tough for her. Again, I again I don't know if this caught at the last video, but Farina and A, I don't not Farina and A, but Farina and Fossilor, I don't know what the relation they have to each other. I don't know if there are two separate entities, Fossilors being the 
definitive Hydro Archon and making a human named Farina who's the definitive human and not the Archon because we know that Farina isn't an Archon because Fossilors told her to fake being an Archon you know what I'm saying so we know that Farina is an Archon so are they two different entities or are they the same entity but two different forms all right is it is, is it the same entity that has a human form which is Farina, who is not a hard archon, and then a kind of a mental, a, div a divine form in the form of Fossilors, who is, you know, the archon. I'm not sure if it's two different entities there or one entity. I'm assuming it's two different entities because Fossilors ended her life and Farina's still alive. And so, like, right, if Farina, if they were the same entity, right, like A and Raiden Shogun, I'm assuming if A died, well, if, if A died, then Raiden Shogun would probably still function. But anyways, what, that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know if they're the same entity right. or different entities, Let's but I'm, assume, I'm, I'm assuming that they're two different entities. And yeah, Farina's life is, is rough, right? She kind of, I mean, it's very similar to all the other Archons. They kind of led tough lives. We know that uh, Venti had a sad past, which is, you know, why, why he looks the way he does because of that person. And then Morax, you know, he's been through a lot. He's the oldest. He's actually the oldest Archon, right? And then, and then Raiden Shogun, you know what happened with her sister died and, and all that stuff. And then Nahida, honestly, her life has been pretty chill, but she has been in the prison for like her whole life. <laughs> so chill might not be the best word, but you know, she hasn't been through like that much bad stuff. It's just that the one bad stuff she has been in has been her entire life, right? But Farina has been through a lot and it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty tough. It's a pretty tough uh, pill to swallow and it's pretty sad. <laughs> Farina is one of those characters. I don't know if I ever mentioned this. I feel like I may have mentioned this in my videos, but I've definitely thought of it. Farina definitely seems like a person that, you know, you'd want to, who, who, not want to, but she definitely seems like a person who needs a hug. <laughs> I think I said it before. I may have not said it before, but I mean, it definitely is obvious now. She definitely needs a hug. And, and I'm glad kind of the ending that she got because she stuck through it. She stuck through it the entire time, faking being an, an Archon. And at the end, she was finally rewarded with it. And she was able to save her, um, her nation. So, like, even though she was human, like, Fossilors wanted to create this human with real emotion and stuff like that. I mean, Fo Farina navigated pretty well. Like, it's, she's a tough human to be able to navigate, you know, keeping it all a secret. And, um, you know, staying with it the entire time. That whole incident that, by the way, the whole incident that Alekino kind of assaulted Farina. And then Farina was crying. I mean, it does kind of make sense in the terms of, like, at, back then I thought it was, oh, because she got assaulted, that's why she's crying. But honestly, it's kind of like two reasons that Farina was crying. It's one, the idea of her not being Archon. Because Alekino was kind of suspecting that, um... The, well, that the Farina wasn't Archon and so like yeah, yeah that's a big threat because if she's found out then her nation is dead so that's a worry that she had probably and two another reason why she's crying is because I think that's what she normally does I think she normally just You're cries a lot spinning. which is pretty sad but nowadays I think after this whole situation it's gonna be a lot better for her and so I'm pretty excited to play her story quest because I do want to I think after everything she's done she has gotten like, I mean, I think she may have gotten a little bit of respect from Nivellet, but like, yeah, we've been pooping on her the entire time. And so like, honestly, we, she kind of does deserve kind of the, um, some, what's it, praise and some respect for what she's done. Like she's toughed it out. And so I think she definitely deserved that. And it's, it's quite upsetting that what happened to her, right? But she did save her nation. So like her resolve was pretty, her resolve was pretty strong. Her resolve and justice was pretty strong there, so we can put some respect on that, right? Um, but anyways, so we talked about that. Another thing I want to talk about was the whole Narwhal situation. It was kind of confusing. I don't understand what this Narwhal came from. Apparently, it's something that child bumped into. You know, child bumped into this Narwhal, and it's like the master's pet. Skirk's master's pet, which is a bit confusing because, like, yeah, Skirk isn't the highest person up the ladder, but... Yeah, this Narwhal is like from another world. I guess it's not unnatural for things from another world coming into Tevet. I think the Abyss might have something to do with another world. We do know that Child, or I don't think we know this, but it was, could be assumed that Child trains in like the Abyss. um, Like the Spiral Abyss even. 
And that's where he gets all his powers from. And I think it's pretty interesting how the Narwhal, they added the Narwhal into it. I thought it was kind of lazy at first, being like, okay, we're having this unknown entity join in aliens. But, I mean, there's more to Genshin Impact than just Tavet, right? There's us, because we're descenders. There's our siblings, who should be kind of be in the same position as us. But there's also this whole Abyss thing, you know, this, the whole Abyss order. There's this whole Hex and Zirkle people who seem very mystery and mysterious and powerful as well. And then now we have this whole new branch of people, which I'm going to call the Skirk people. <laughs> I don't know what Skirk is, but sh uh, Skirk obviously, um, she, she said that she doesn't want to be on like this plane, this, this, um, you know, this level. She mentioned a few times that she doesn't want to be in like, um, that, that plane. What's it called? Uh, the surface. She said she doesn't want to be on the surface. The surface, I'm guessing, is Tavet, and then like Skirk and Skirk's people, like her master and all those other things, even where like, um, child, uh, trains in. It's all like a different dimension. Like, is it still Tavet? Don't tell me Skirk is from. Don't tell me this is like, uh, Hoyoverse lore, and that Skirk is like from Honkai Third Impact or something, right? Like, there's still so much, it's, it's pretty confusing, but yeah, I think introducing the Narwhal, again, introduces us to like these different uh, subset of people that we haven't really met on our journey, and it opens up a lot, right? If Genshin Impact has a part two, <laughs> Genshin Impact 2, or more, more likely what will happen is that Genshin Impact will finish the whole story. We, we, we either reunite with our sibling, or our sibling is still gone, or our sibling dies, or something like that happens. And there's a continuation of Genshin Impact, like there, like how there is in Honkai Third Impact. Then definitely, I think we're gonna be exploring more of people like Skirk, right? I think it's very interesting. That's where Narwhal comes in. I think it's very interesting too. Um, the Narwhal, yeah, it's, it's something about feeding off of primordial, the primordial seawater, which is why like the water level rises. I think it's a bit confusing at that aspect, so I don't really want to like get into that because I'm still unsure of what's going on there. Um, but yeah, let's go on to uh, Skirk. I think Skirk's a very interesting character. I kind of forgot about her, but um, Child did mention her that uh, that's that's her master or that's his master, Skirk. And um, from what we've been talking about or what Skirk has said to us, it seems very likely that we'll see Skirk again, which is really exciting because Skirk is not. We don't really meet a lot of people that are like, we don't really have access to people like Skirk, you know, people that are, they have a lot of knowledge, but they can't really, we don't see them, you know, like, like basically like, I'm talking about like people like Alice, you know, people from the abyss, you know, even some of the higher ups in the uh, Fatui, we don't really have access to those people. So having someone like Skirk, um, be able to be willing to talk to us, like she gave us a lot of information here, which is pretty nice. But the thing is, she seems kind of dumb. <laughs> not that she's like, her, not that she's like actually dumb, but she just doesn't have that much information. Simply because, I don't know, her master doesn't give her a lot of information. Sounds and since she doesn't go to the surface, she's not really learning a lot. Um, and so I think it's super interesting that we have Skirk with us. Uh, hopefully, again, we, again, and also Skirk is Child's master. And so if Child talks to her a lot, which is weird because Child said that he was looking for Skirk. So all of a sudden, Skirk is coming back into his life now? It, like, it's weird because Child was like, yeah, I'm looking for my master. That's why I'm here in Fontaine. There might be something here. Um, that was why uh, Child was here in Fontaine in the first place, right? Because I think he wanted to know more about all his history and stuff like that. And so, yeah. Anyways, I'm just I'm just super excited about a character like Skirk. Um, I think... Because again, I don't re I don't recall any other characters like her that we we have access to that we can talk to, and so, and she also has some information about the descenders being in the gnosis and stuff, which I I guess I can talk to now. Um, we know that I I I mentioned I don't know if I mentioned this, but I don't like the whole thing about Nahida. Nahida's my least favorite archon, and it has nothing to do with how they look, but um. It's kind of how the Archons act and how the Archons um, gave up their Gnosis. Oh, I have to talk about Archon too because, yeah, we still don't know what the Archon is in Fonte. But anyways, yeah, we know that um, Barbados got his Gnosis stolen. 
We know that Morax gave his noses to the Vitui, very similar to Nivellet. So Nivellet and Mor uh, Morax both gave up their noses pretty easily. Um, in Inazuma, the noses actually got traded for a life. And so it's a little bit different because Yai again traded our, the noses for our life. And then in Sumeru, uh, Nahida gave the gnosis to the Tore, the doctor, right? He gave, she gave it to the Tore. And the Tore gave her some information, but that information wasn't useful to us. Like, I think the Tore, if I remember correctly, right? I could be wrong. But Nahida gave the Tore the gnosis. Sounds good to me. For exchange, for information about the sky being fake, right? Is that right? And then Nahida hasn't told us anything about the sky being fake. I'm sure Nahida is researching it. I'm sure we're going to get information from Nahida herself in the future. Will that be in an Archon? I mean, there has to be in an Archon quest that she gives us information about the sky being fake. But yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is, Nahida griefed us. Nahida gave away her gnosis, but it was completely useless. And if anything, it hurts us because now the Fatui have the gnosis, which they can't be. It can't be up to any good. Interestingly enough, after this Archon quest, it might not be as clear as um, the Fatui are up to no good. But uh, like I said, right? You know, Morax gave it, but I'm, I'm gonna trust him because it's apparently some sort of contract, or I'm gonna trust Morax there. Um, Barbados got his stolen, what can he do? A, uh, or I guess Ye traded the Gnosis for our life, so like, okay, that's beneficial to us because we want to live, obviously. We didn't want to get killed by Skarmouche. Nahida trolled us. <laughs> Nahida trolled us because got, we got nothing out of it, and she's withholding that information from us. Um, why am I talking about this? Oh, because I want to talk about the Gnosis. Um, looking back on it, it might not be a bad thing that uh, Nahida gave the Gnosis up like that. Because it seemed like the Gnosis came from exactly the Senders? Uh, or the third Descender? That's very interesting. Because I always thought the Gnosis was part of uh, Genshin Impact. Um, I shouldn't say Genshin Impact. It's part of Tevet, right? Because of like the heavenly principles of Tevet. But it seems like a Descender was the one who... Um, Ended up being creating the gnosis. So that's a, again, I don't know much about the lore in this game. And honestly, all this stuff I'm talking about could be completely wrong. Because again, I'm not really super privy on the lore. I just like talking about it because it's fresh in my memory right now. But I think that's very interesting that, yeah, the gnosis might not be a good thing. And it's interesting because we are also a descender. And Paimon mentioned it at the end there that, yeah, we can also control all these elements. So it could be very easy for someone to kill us. And make us into Gnosis, like the main traveler. Whether you chose the 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 boy or the girl, right? It's the same thing, right? Uh, and I think that's it's very interesting. Bottom line is what I'm trying to say is we actually got useful information from Nivellet, right? We we learn about the Gnosis, we learn about the Descenders, uh, the third Descender from Skirk, um, from Nivellet. So like, yeah, it's, it's from Skirk, but it's, it's mainly from Nivellet. Well, I guess it's not from Skirk, it's from Skirk's master. Where did his, uh, where did he learn it from? We don't know, but uh, Skirk did confirm that her master is a him. So that's very interesting. We got him as well. And uh, yeah, anyways, I think this whole conversation stemmed from Skirk. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what Skirk has uh, to say for us next. Uh, I think she's definitely going to be a super interesting character to keep her eye on. But speaking of Skirk, uh, Child. <laughs> child. Uh, honestly, I wish we saw more Child. I <laughs> I wish we saw more children in Genshin Impact. No, I wish we saw more Child. And because, yeah, we didn't really see him. <laughs> child playing such an important role. Fighting off the Norwell for us so that we can get time. Basically being, again... Part of the catalyst for everything that happened here, uh, we did get some. I mean, we did get some appreciate. Uh, uh, we did repay him and Alekino at the same time for Nivellet giving up the Gnosis, which I think is a fair trade. I think it's fine. It's a fair trade. I don't like it, but it's better than what Nahida did, honestly. Um, uh, Chaya didn't really do much, but he did get to fight, which is good because he likes fighting, and he did get to get reunited with his master. Because in one of the scenes, I think he was thrown back with a uh, Skirk. Like Skirk like threw him back after Sounds we like fought the whale to half health. We didn't even kill the whale by the way. We just fought the whale back down to half health. 
Um, where was the scene in the video? Um, it's pretty cool because Kirk like had a ball and then she threw it. Um, that's what I'm saying. Skirk is a. I'm excited. I'm excited for Skirk now that there's a character like her in the game. Yeah, she got this ball and this child laying next to her, kind of unconscious. And then she like, I'm re-watching uh, what I recorded. She threw the ball and child, you know, threw child back. Oh, poor child. But yeah, hopefully child now has been reunited with Skirk, which means he can ask her questions and stuff, which I think is good. Again, Skirk seems to be a good thing to have in the game right now. And yeah, I just wish we got a chance to talk with child and thank him properly. I mean, he did fulfill his uh, duties of getting the gnosis, which is sad because child has always kind of been like a chess piece. I mean, all the Vitui har Harpringers are, are chess pieces, right? But like, Child doesn't really... He's like, not in on the plan. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not the mastermind behind it. He's just kind of being used. Like, in Liyue, he was being used. And then in, in Fontaine, he was kind of being used. Sounds good to oh, me. Child. Um, happy that he, was, he got involved. And honestly, happy that he got a chance to shine again. Again, I think he's gonna be super important. When we go to Chesnaya, I, I hope that child is gonna be our tour guide and I hope he uh, he is helpful to us. And also, is it a good time to talk about Alekino? I kinda wanna talk to her at the end of this video because she's like, again, the character that I kinda am keeping attention to the most. So I might talk about her at the end of this video. But yeah, child is, uh, I wish he got more screen time, uh, but it seems like, it seems like all is well. He got to fight and he got to be reunited with Skirk. So hopefully he can see his master again and ask her questions or whatnot. Hopefully Skirk is willing to talk with him too. Um, and then what happened after that? I'm trying to think of what happened after that. But that's basically it. We defeated the whale and whale has been sent back. And yeah. I think that's all there is to talk about. So at this point, I, I this is what I did with Sumeru. I went back and talked about all the characters, but I want to do it again. Oh, I guess by the time you're watching this video, I never released that video. But when I finished the Sumeru Archon Quest, I talked about all the characters that were in it and basically what I like about them, what I didn't like about them, and stuff like that. And so I do want to do that in, in, in this video real quickly. Um, but yeah, I guess starting off with the first character we saw, which was Lynette. I think Lynette's, uh, or I guess Charlotte. Well, let's start with Charlotte. Charlotte's an interesting character. I like how she was involved with a lot of stuff. She didn't come off as too annoying, which I think would have really been easy for her to come off as because she was like interviewing a bunch of people. So she could have been seen as pretty annoying, but I think I'm happy that she didn't really end up being that way. I like how she was involved and, uh, you know. She helped us out in the end there with the court trial, so I, I like Char I like Charlotte. I think she's cool. Lynette, I mean, Lynette was always that quiet character, you know, quietly involved, um, but always willing to help, right? There is not much to say about her, and honestly, I'm going to go with Fremenet in the same uh, domain. Fremenet, again, a little bit of a quiet guy, didn't really want to talk to people. I mean, Lynette was willing to talk to people, but she was just kind of, she wasn't against it, but she didn't want to. <laughs> it didn't seem like she wanted to. Fremenet actually was against it, and he actually didn't want to. But I think at the end of the day, they were helpful. It, they were really carried by um, by Linny, who was super outgoing and outspoken and super emotional. So I like them. I like the introdu introduction of more Fatui characters because they are Fatui characters. But uh, I think it's a really good. It's really good for them to be in the game because they they kind of showed a traveler that yeah, just because people are Fatui, you don't need to be so super hostile to them. Because up until this point, we've been pretty hostile to Fatui people. I mean, rightfully so. They've only done bad up to this point. But like yeah, even remember when we saw those Fatui people at like the Gapple Islands? I mean, this was like like two like a year ago. Like not this year's Gapple, not this year's summer event, but like last year's summer event. Or even like two years ago, those were like Fatui members. And we were super hostile to them. But at the end of the day, they were just like Fatui members doing their job. And then, you know, the Fatui people in the chasm, those people were super harmless too. And so I think we really need to reassess, at, especially after knowing now that the Gnosis are kind of cursed and they're not good. I think it's a good time to assess. Um, and, and also, Child and I like Kino helping us, right? It's a good time to assess how our viewpoint of the Fatui are. I think after seeing all these Fatui people, I think it's really uh, uh, really eye-opening to us how 
the Fatui people can do good. Uh, we don't know why the Sarpizza, I call it a Sarpizza, I know Sarpizza, but I don't, we don't know why the Sarpizza wants all the Gnosis, right? We don't know why, and so we have to, you know, be cautious to assume that they're doing bad stuff. Yes, they're getting Gnosis in bad manners, right? Right, we had La Signora, she didn't do good stuff. The Dottore, he doesn't do good stuff. Scaramouche didn't do good stuff, alright? So there's a lot of Fatui people who are not doing good stuff. Child honestly didn't really do good stuff in the leeway either. But then we have the House of Hearth kids. We have Alekino, right? They're not too. doing bad stuff. They're doing actually good stuff. And so we have to be, I think going forward, we have to really be cautious about the Fatui people. And again, I think that's thanks to the House of Hearth kids and the Knave, right? Again, I'll talk about the Knave at the end of this video. Next up, I think we met, um, who do we meet after that? Like, Navia, Nivellet, Farina, oh no, we met Farina and Cloran, right? Um, I guess, yeah, I'll talk about Cloran. I think Cloran, she's cool, I think she's cool, she's super strong, but I mean, yeah, she's kind of dead inside. It, which makes sense, because I mentioned this before, she's the person with, like, probably the most confirmed kill count. As like a human, like because Morax probably killed the most people. I'm gonna assume is Morax, but like in terms of human that we've met, it's definitely it's definitely um it's definitely Cloran. She kills people, not like out of cold blood, but like out of her job. So I think she kind of has a rough. Like her 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 occupation is super rough because she's like killing people, and I can see how that will wear down on her soul. Like, killing, for example, Navia's father, like, that couldn't have been easy, uh, Mr. Callus, that couldn't have been easy for, for Cloran. And like I mentioned, I, we haven't seen much of Cloran, to be 100% honest. We know that she's super reliable and super strong. I'd love to see what her story quest has in store for us, so I'm waiting for that. I guess next up, I want to talk about Navia, and then we can go to her, like, the Sounds Fortress of Meripede people. But Navia is super cool. I mean, she's kind of like, she reminds me of like the Rinyu of Octopath Traveler. Man, she just gets dunked on. She just gets dunked on, dunked on, and dunked on again. But she's like such a good person. And I'm, I'm happy to see how like Charlotte's super friendly with her. Cloran is, is now super friendly with her. Um, and, and like, yeah, she just gets dunked on. I really, I really like Navia. Navia is probably like my second favorite. Um, I guess third favorite. Navi is probably my third favorite uh, Fontaine character just because, yeah, he just seems really nice and really cool. <laughs> and really smart, too. Uh, yeah, but she just gets dunked on a lot, which is sad. Uh, Fortress of Meripede people, we had uh, Worcestershire. I think Worcestershire is pretty badass, let me let me be honest. I think he looks really cool. And I think that, I knew, I knew that his ship, I didn't mention it. Uh, I didn't mention it this entire, um... Act, Act 5, right? But his whole thing about the ship going up and saving all those people. Oh man, that was so cool. That was so cool. Um, yeah. I think he's just doing his thing. You know, he's vibing. Worcestershire is just a character who vibes, you know? Like, can't go against that. He's just chilling. Sejuin also. She's a super nice, friendly character. Uh, don't really know, or don't, we don't really, we didn't really see much of Sejuin, but, you know, she's a Melusine. Melusines have just all been pretty friendly, you know, kind of not the smartest. <laughs> like the Adepti, they're kind of like not human, so they're kind of, you know, different. Um, but Sejuin is nice, Sejuin is nice. What other character do we see? I'm trying to think. I'm not, yeah, I guess we're going to talk about Nivellet. Oh, I really like Nivellet too. Oh my gosh. You know what? Scratch that. Scratch that. Navi is my fourth favorite character. Because my favorite character is Nivellet. I think the first time... I mean, Nivellet left a really good impression on me. He just so well spoken. Like, we met in the Opera House, which was the first time during, like, Linny's first magic trick. We met him in the seats. And he was talking to us. And he's just so well spoken. Um... And yeah, he's super cool. <laughs> he's super cool too, like Worcestershire. Because he's like the dragon and everything. And the funny thing is, he's gotten stronger lore-wise, right? He's gained his full power as a dragon. And so he's gotten stronger lore-wise. Lore -wise. And uh, yeah, he's just super strong. And he, yeah, I really like Nevelet. He's probably my favorite character of all Fontaine. Just because of how... How much he was involved in the story. How cool he was in the story. Like that Fortress of Meripede scene... I mean, that was sick. And then the ending scene where Nivellet, like, 
uh, stop the water from raining. I mean, that was sick, right? And then Nivellet kind of like, he's just, he, he's willing to talk with everybody. Like his, his conversation with Skirk at the end there. Um, his conversation with Fossilors. Uh, yeah. Nivellet's sick. Nivellet's sick. I don't think I'll ever roll for him, but he's sick. <laughs> he's, he's, he's definitely a cool character. My third favorite character is Farina. I guess now I can talk. I might be missing a character, by the way. But I want to talk about Farina. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But we do know that Farina is a human. A 500 years swan. old. But now that she doesn't have the go the power Sounds of Farina behind her. How is she going to... Is she going to die from old age? You know, how's... How's that gonna work? I I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't wanna think about those questions, but yeah, Frina has had a rough and like I mentioned, Frina is definitely one of those characters that I think like wins the award of the person who needs a hug the most. I like, guess tough. I I'm curious to what her story quest has to say again, if similar to Cloran, but yeah, uh, Frina has had a rough, but I'm super happy that she's able to be liberated from her duties as being the fake Hydro Archon. And you know what? I think it's a good time to talk about the Hydro Archon. Who is the Hydro Archon? I mentioned that it could have been Nivellet, but it doesn't make sense. I don't think the Dragon Sovereign could be the Archon. Because they're like... I think the Archon and the Dragon Sovereign are two of the same... Um, what's it? Like, two of the same... Not the same, but like... They're titles at the same magnitude, of the same hierarchy, right? Being an Archon, I feel like is as strong as being a dragon. Manifest. And so Nivellet is already a dragon. So who's the Archon? We know it's not Farina. Farina's not the Archon. And I don't think she wants to be Archon. Obviously, she doesn't want to be Archon. She's been stuck at that fake role for like 500 years. It's miserable. So who else is Archon? I don't know if we have a Hydro Archon. I think it's the first time where we actually don't have a Hydro Archon. And I don't know if that's... Is that okay? Is, is there... Is it okay to have no Archon? Because we know that uh, Leeway, most most of people Leeway think that there's no Archon. So is it is it is it a thing that Archons can just die, and no one can um, and then no one can be replaced as Archon? There can be like truly Archonless. I'm not sure. Anyways, I just checked back in my game. I checked to see a uh, Freena's page, and yeah, her is still. It still doesn't say whether she has a vision or a gnosis. Well, she obviously doesn't have a gnosis. It's freaking in the hands of the Fatui. But, like, she, it doesn't say that she has a vision. So, yeah, I'm wondering if her story quest is something to do with her getting her vision. I don't know. Because in the special program, it was said that people who want to make meetings with her have to, like, talk to one of her familiars. Which is, like, the water spirit that she made. And it would be hard for me to believe that she already has a hydro vision. Um... Because she seems so powerless. But that being said, though, Sounds it would make sense that she does have a, a hydro a vision. Just because then how would she be able to make those familiars to set up her appointments, right? But yeah, I really like Farina. I think I will roll for Farina. I think, even though I really, I do don't like her that much as a playable character. Like, I don't think she's that good. I think she will have her uses in the future. And that infinite uh, skill of time is pretty good. So I probably will roll for her after I roll for Alekina. So during Farina's first rerun. Hopefully it's not at the same banner. Or hopefully it's not at the same patch as Alekina. That would be kind of miserable. Um, is that it? Is that all I want to talk about? I think the final topic, guys. The final topic might be talking about Alekina. By the way, I've been saying Alekina that way. Because like her name is pronounced... Like it's, it's Italian. And you're supposed to... Uh, enunciate the key like Arlecchino and so like I would have to say Arlecchino Arlecchino but if I'm gonna say Arlecchino then I might as well just say it in Italian Arlecchino because it just sounds more natural that way um and I don't want to say Arlecchino because that's not really how you pronounce it but anyways Arlecchino uh yeah again I said that like she's my favorite character design wise I'll be 100% honest with you after I've been after seeing her design more and more just the Honestly, it's needed. been getting. I've been this. I've been not. I've not disliking her design, but like her design has been less. I've been liking her design less and less. I've noticed after like seeing her so often. I think her hair is a bit flat, and as much as I uh, I like that she has full pants, I will admit that her pants are pretty plain. 
I mean, I, the bottom of her pants are pretty interesting, but I think those are just her boots that she's wearing, or her shoes that she's wearing. Um, but regardless, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. I This whole time, this whole uh, act, I was kind of saying how Arlequino is the bad one. She's the one who, like, started this all thing. I was wrong, obviously, but I think it's I think it's normal to have... I don't, well, I don't know if it's normal, but I think it's... Uh, it's fair to have a little bit of distrust in the Fatui Heartbringers because, I mean, they have brought nothing but trouble for us. Um, and so it was, yeah, it came to quite a surprise to me that at the end of the Archon quest, it did not seem that Arlequino did anything bad. It seemed like the entire time, like she was actually a good person. And we actually helped and we actually worked with her. We worked with her a lot. She was the one who gave us the direction to the ruins, which we were able to see those stone slates, right? And so, she seems to be a super good person. Which is odd for me to say of a Fatui person, but yeah, she was she was good. And again, what I judge, again, I, I didn't mention this before, but I didn't like how she assaulted Farina. But now seeing how Farina cries, that uh, she has multiple reasons to cry like that, it might not be the only reason that, yeah, it was, it may, she may have been crying for other reasons, but still, it's pretty, pretty nasty of Arlequina to assault Frina like that, regardless, right? Um, but if we put that aside, Arlequina does actually seem to be a good person, and, which is surprising, because, yeah, none of the Heartbringers have actually been good people, or they've always caused trouble, even Child, he has caused trouble, um, because he tried to kill us, remember that? Remember when he tried to kill us? So... Yeah, my opinion on her is very interesting because there was two things I wanted her to be. I don't, I straight, because I, again, I want to see six, I like Gino because I really like her design. I'm liking her design a little bit less to be honest, but like, I do like her design. And so, I, but the thing is, there's certain characters I don't like to roll for. I don't like to roll for dead people, by the way, all right? Genshin Impact, we haven't really had the opportunity of rolling for a dead person. But for example, there's a game called Near Reincarnation, which is a gotcha Near game. And there are dead people in that game. And I just don't like playing dead people. I just don't like using dead people in video games. I feel like it's kind of brutal. I don't know. I feel like they're dead. Just let them rest. You know, I don't want to. I don't like using dead people in video games. Uh, I say that, but no one in Genshin Impact has died, so that's that's just one of my uh, kind of opinions. Another opinion I I think is I don't like using characters who are suffering severely or are uh, bad guys. I guess I'll start with suffering severely. For example, Kali. Um, this is gonna be spoiler for the Sumeru Archon quest if you haven't played that. But like, uh, she had like, she was like, had a sickness in where she was like. Her, her muscles, her movement was like being restricted and she was dying essentially because she had this a sickness. Um, but uh, she was cured of it after after we uh, after we oh, made uh, Rocket Devata be forgotten. Basically all that stuff disappeared. And so essentially uh, Kali was cured. But I didn't really like using Kali before that, before she got cured. I kind of felt bad. In fact, I still have Kali's pita pocket recipe in my inventory. I never used that. Because her pita, her pita pocket recipe um, that she made, she handwritten it when she still had that disease. And so I felt really bad for her that she had to go through all that. And um, yeah, I just don't like using characters who are like sick like that, right? Kali is an example. Now I'm okay using Kali because she's not sick anymore. But, or lower wise, she's not sick anymore, right? But yeah, that's just some things that I don't like using. And another person, I, another type of character I don't like using, I don't really like using bad guys. <laughs> I don't really like using bad guys. It just rubs me the wrong way using a bad guy on my party. I want all my people to be good people <laughs> that I'm using. I know some people don't care. Some people are willing to use dead people. Or some people are willing to use characters who are suffering. Some people are willing to use bad guys. Actually, some people like using bad guys. But like for me, I did not want to do that. And so, yeah, that's basically the most important thing. Not liking to use bad guys in, in video games. Which really made me worry about Arlequino. While I really liked her, I was worried that she might end up being a bad guy. For example, like Dottore. And I would not like using her. But as I played through the story, it became more and more obvious that she is actually not bad at all. She has only been there. She has helped Fontaine through the situation. She has kind of tried to motivate Farina to act faster. I mean, she didn't for obvious reasons. She couldn't. But like, she's done a lot. Or Arlequino, Arlequino has done a lot. And so we have to kind of 
respect that of her. And she has been a good person. Which is good. I wanted Arlecchino to be one. I want her to start off as a good person. Which she has been good this entire time. Hopefully that doesn't change. That can still change. She can still be a nasty person. We know what she can do behind closed doors. She will murder with no second thought. If it goes against her ideas, if it goes up, yeah, if, if, if anything challenges her ideas of like family and stuff, she will kill. No hesitation, right? We know that she's kind of crazy. But also, yeah, I'm, it's, it's, I really wanted her to one, start off as a good person, or two, have a redemption arc. I think what they did with Wonder was amazing. Like, if I, I like what they did with Wonder, because that's exactly what I want in a, a character. A bad guy who turns into a good guy in. You know, I just like that stuff. And so, you know, I wanted, I like, you know, if she was bad to have a good Why redemption arc. Well, she doesn't need to have a redemption arc because she was good this entire time. And so I'm pretty happy about that. I, it makes me more inclined to roll for, I like, you know, it makes me more happy to roll for her knowing that she actually has been pretty good this entire time. In, in, uh, in, um, I shouldn't say the entire time. She did assault Freena. <laughs> <laughs> Freena was down, she was down pretty bad, and so Arlecchino did add to that, but I think I'll look past that begrudgingly, um, but yeah, anyways, that's my thoughts about the, uh, kind of all of Fontaine, mostly about the Fontaine final act, but mostly a, a lot about the character as well. I know I talked a lot, I know i probably missing it for getting a lot, I know I also may have misinterpreted a lot of stuff, but the, hey, that, those are just my thoughts, I want to make the little fun video that just to talk about that stuff. Tina. And yeah, that's kind of it. So, thank you so much for watching, you're beautiful the way you are, I hope you enjoyed my little discussion video, and I'll see you in another Genshin Impact video, probably when I play Freena's Archon Quest or version 1.2 major event. Not sure which one I'll do first. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. You're beautiful the way you are. I already said all this. I'll see you next time. So sorry. All right, let's head off. Cool it. I'm not done. Looks like I've still got a long way to go.